Well, have you ever had a revelation that seems so simple, yet it profoundly impacted your life? Today, Jay John and his wife, Killy, share some practical wisdom about everything from anxiety to contentment to importance of forgiveness. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying Table Talk. And remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. Well, you know how much we love bringing you insightful and uplifting talks here at the table, and we always get so many questions from you at home on a variety of different topics. So today, with the help of our special guest, we're bringing you practical biblical wisdom for navigating issues we face in our day-to-day -day lives. And joining me at the table to do this, April Simons. I'm ready. Are you Good ready to be here. for yes. free open chat? I'm ready to ask questions. Okay. You got your question ready? I got it. Okay. And Kendra, Lots of questions. We, yeah. <laughs> He's got good answers. He does. Yeah. Kendra Kelly I love Dean. the way our guest explains things. Yeah. He has such a good way of wording it and making it so simple and understandable. So he this really is going to be great. Relatable. He be does. Good. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. And I love our family from across the pond. <laughs> from across the pond. Jay, <laughs> John, you. and Kelly. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Joni. <laughs> so good to have you guys Thank here. You. You're great always a blessing. Thank you. Just so precious. They're such a beautiful and sweet spirit. Amen. Well, um, let's just kind of start with one of the things that I've been hearing a lot here at Daystar from our viewers from around the world. And that is coming out of a pandemic where people were locked down for so long, kids, you know, out of school, being taught at home, having to wear masks at school, on and on and on. But anxiety has been a huge issue. And I know I've even had doctors on here, psychiatrists, talking about how that, you know, in their offices, they're dealing with people who have depression and anxiety and thoughts yeah. of suicide. Mm -hmm. This is a huge issue, Jay John. What would you say oh. as to how we, the church, should deal with some of this that's going on right oh, now? Joni, what you've opened up there is, oh, it's massive. It's huge, it's uh, distressing, and it's true how you um, articulated it just there. And some of the, the problems are gonna go on for decades. Mm -hmm. It's true. Of, I mean, abuse has taken place, all type women have suffered, a lot of issues. So, well, this is where the church has got to step up, yeah. isn't it? What does the church do? Um, you know, we, we have to be a church that cares for people yes. because people don't care how much we know mm -hmm. until they know yeah, how, how much, much we, we care. care. It's, mm -hmm. And that is it, it is. at the it's end true. of the day. So true. And we can't help everyone, mm -hmm. but we can help someone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Kelly, what would you say to encourage people watching who've struggled with anxiety? Well, you know, I think... If the, to the Christians that are watching, you know, there's that element of like, oh, we shouldn't feel anxious, we shouldn't feel depressed. But, you know, my mum was so funny because she said to me, she said, um, she said, she said, oh, I'm just so bad Christian, you know, because I'm feeling so anxious and everything. And I said, mum, don't beat yourself up. We're not meant to be feeling, you know, guilty and because it makes it all worse. Yeah. But just, I want people just to remember their heavenly father and remember how much he loves them. And, you know, that's not an easy answer. It's hard. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes we have to battle with our minds. We yeah. have to kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. you know, think about those things and how God sees us, mm -hmm. not how we see ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I love this verse. It's from Isaiah 41, verse 13. It says, the Lord holds you by your right hand and yes. says to you, do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. And I just love that picture of just the Lord standing beside me, holding my hand. Yeah. And I just pray for anyone watching now that they will get that sense that Jesus loves them that much yes. that he holds them by the hand how and he's did, with them. How did you um, get through moments of, I mean, we all had frustration, but I know in, in the UK, 
you had some serious lockdown going yes. on because I know I'd heard it from our viewers. Yeah. How did you deal with it, Jay John? I know you wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like practical things, like can you find peace in reading the Word of God in prayer, okay. in fellowship, or family? I mean, what? Well, you know, the first lockdown in England was really strict, very severe. Everything was locked down. You know, you couldn't interact with people. You'll get fined. So you you were locked down. And and I think uh, routine and discipline were the important things. We we still got up at the same time, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I still got onto my bike at 7 a.m. You know, I was at my desk at 8. But then we stopped for lunch at 12, and we had a little bit of lunch, and then we played cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we played, I love to play cards. Yeah. We played cards at lunch. <laughs> Lunchtime. <laughs> then I was back at my desk at one, and then and then stopped at six. Yeah. So yeah. I think it was important to keep routine, mm. keep discipline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, of course, prayer, exercise, eating well, sleeping well. Yeah. Very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I April. like what you said about bitterness. You said no matter how long we nurse a grudge, it won't get better. The only way to get better is to forgive. Yeah. And bitterness can just kill you from the inside out. Ooh. And it does, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And the thing about unforgiveness mm -hmm. is that we break the bridge on which we must cross. Mm -hmm. And we think that Ooh. unforgiveness Mm -hmm. um, is causing pain to the other person, yeah, when in right. fact yeah. it's causing yeah. us pain. Right. Yes. Exactly. And then in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, forgive us our sins yeah. mm -hmm. as we forgive those mm -hmm. who sin against us. So it's like, wait a minute, oh my word, you know, God's mm -hmm. saying, unless you forgive other people, yeah. I'm actually not going to forgive That's you. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. But because I'm forgiving you, I want you to forgive other people. Mm -hmm. And it is liberating yeah. so good. to choose choose to forgive, it's liberating. And you think about what you just quoted. I used, I used to say, well, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But then right after that, it says, oh, and lead us not, not into, yeah. temptation. into temptation, mm -hmm. but deliver us from evil. And that's evil. What, you, what you said was so good. We break the bridge yes. that's right. that we're trying to cross yeah. when we right. don't forgive. Yeah. And... It opens a tiny door yes. mm -hmm. for the enemy to come yeah. in and disrupt. Absolutely. That's what unforgiveness yeah. does. Absolutely. Yeah. It is so true. I cannot tell you, those of you that are watching, you think that the fact that you're holding on to that unforgiveness, like you said, is somehow poisoning the other person. It, and was it Joyce Meyer said, it's like drinking poison and expecting it to kill the other person. Yes. Yes. But it actually kills you. Yes. Yes. And somebody told me the other day, they said, well, I, I'm sorry, I was dealing with a situation and can't forgive. I, I just don't feel like I can forgive. I said, but can you at least say, Jesus, I know that you want me to forgive and I don't feel like I can do it but I'm asking you to help me mm -hmm. forgive. Because yeah. sometimes yes. you can do that. I mean, yes. yeah. but yeah. you've got to make that step forward yeah. mm -hmm. because what happens to the person that doesn't let go of the unforgiveness? Mm -hmm. it, it is tragic, it's isn't it? It is tragic, yeah. damaging. Yeah, even and to their health. It, even and it, yeah, to yeah. their physical yeah. body as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. definitely. And I think you do also become very bitter. Yes. If you can't forgive somebody, mm -hmm. you carry that on into other relationships mm -hmm. and then... Do either of you have a story like where you had to forgive? It was really difficult. Well, I, I know that you're very fond of my mother. I love your mother. And I'm, Wait, I'm very see. touched because every time we meet, you always ask me about my mother. And um, I think the first time we met, Joni, I think I said to you, oh, um, my mother is a travel agent for guilt trips. And, um, you know, it, I mean... It, Every time I call her, she makes me feel bad, you know. And therefore, I have to choose yeah. mm -hmm. to forgive. Right. Before all. Yeah. And, and even to honour. And to, yeah. you're right. Yes, that's because, right. I mean, that's like written in the stone, you Definitely. know. Definitely. <laughs> About the finger of <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah. And the, 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 the verse that I think is very important here, and it says, as much as it lies within yes. you, yes. keep yes. the peace. Yes. So in other words, it doesn't matter about that person's reaction mm. to you, mm -hmm. that's God's issue. Yeah. But my reaction to them mm. 
-hmm. is God and me. And I, yeah. so as much as it lies within me, so I have to choose to forgive yeah. every day, every week, okay. and just keep loving, keep loving, keep and we'll loving. And we'll have an mm -hmm. opportunity, all of us, honestly, every day, we can mm -hmm. forgive something. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Seven times 70 hour. means in an yeah. hour sometimes. Oh, uh, yeah. We had a problem with someone had really uh, done some things and stolen some money and some all kinds of things. And so I sat at home and Fred came in and he said, Anna, have you forgiven him? And I said, yes, I have. And he said, are you praying for him? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, are you praying for God to bless him or for God to get him? <laughs> and I said, I guess I better pray some more. Because <laughs> when you know you've really forgiven, you yeah. pray for God to bless them. Yeah. That is so good. What's your uh, question? My question was about contentment. I think everybody is looking for fulfillment and, and uh, success and excitement when all of that boils down, what we're really wanting is to be content in our relationship with God, with ourselves, with one another. How do we find that? Absolutely. Well, look, the thing is this. We always think, don't we, that grass is greener mm -hmm. over that side of the fence. We do. Mm -hmm. But the grass is not greener over that side of the fence. Yes. The grass is not greener over this side of the fence. The grass is greener when you water it. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? So yes. we, we got to water our yes. own grass. And mm -hmm. the thing is, um, we think that we're going to be content with more, mm -hmm. but actually, we learn contentment with less. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. When it's less, yeah. you learn to be more content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many of us need to use it up, wear it out, or do without, I'll you know, away. And, yes, and just be more kind of practical yeah. about yeah. life. Yeah. This is what I have. I need to be a good steward of what I've got. Yes. Let's not worry about what others have got. Yeah, that's good. That's, good. that's so good, that's yes. Good. So I have a question. I guess it could kind of be lumped up with apathy, but I actually had a Christian, for real, say this to me not too long ago. Well, if God really is in control, well, then what is the point of me praying and why should I pray? Mm. Oh dear, the thing, look, praying, to me, praying is not twisting the hand of God, it's holding the hand of God. And trusting the hand of God. It's holding it, mm -hmm. it's holding the hand of God. What do we need in life? Uh, we need insight, we need foresight, we need oversight. Okay, insight is like looking through a microscope, a foresight is like looking through a telescope. Uh, oversight is like looking down at your home from a helicopter. Well, who's got insight? Who's got yeah. oversight? Mm -hmm. Who's got foresight? Mm -hmm. Only God's got that. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I want to be able to see well, if I want to be able to be guided well, I need to be guided by the creator of the entire universe. Amen. And good. I like what one um, preacher said, I never pray longer than five minutes but I never go longer than five minutes without praying. Mm, that's yeah, good. That's so good. Good. interesting. Good. I need to hold his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What about failure? How, how can we deal with that since we all have failed sometime or another? Oh, well, and let's be honest, we all fail. Right. We all fail, so, uh, sometimes deliberately, sometimes we slip over, sometimes, I mean, it's like you're, you know, you're walking on the sidewalk and you, know, you don't want to slip off, but you do slip off, don't you? you know, so sometimes it just happens, it's part of life. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and this is where I, I get so much encouragement from Hebrews. We've got this great cloud of witnesses, Amen. including Marcus. Yes. And what are yes. they doing? They are, they are urging us and encouraging us yeah. on. Mm, yes, yeah. yes. And I, I think sometimes God allows, he allows pain, he allows suffering, he allows these things to happen. And you think, why, why? There are some plants that produce a beautiful fragrance, but they only produce a beautiful fragrance when they're crushed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think sometimes God allows us to be crushed yeah. so that Good. we can produce a, a more beautiful mm -hmm. fragrance. Wow. Well, somebody told me one time, I don't want to follow a leader that doesn't have a limb. Yeah. <laughs> because you know that they've been with God. And because mm -hmm. there is no perfect mm -hmm. church, right. Right. perfect pastor, no. perfect congregation. That's one of the things I hear a lot. Somebody told me the other day, 
I, we were talking about church. Well, I don't go to church. There are just a bunch of hypocrites there. Mm-hmm. Or I've been hurt in church. Mm-hmm. And people genuinely have been hurt yeah. in church. Yeah. What would you say as far as encouraging people, that verse that says, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together, why is it important? you think, to be oh, joined to a church? Yeah, oh, well, I just had a quick flashback to... <laughs> I just had a quick flashback to when I spoke at Sydney University years ago, and um, there was, like, 4,000 students, and they wouldn't fit into the auditorium, and we were outside. And uh, I preached, I stepped down, someone was speaking to me, and this girl comes along, interrupts us r- quite rudely, and she says, I hated what you said. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And uh, she says, I can tell you this, that church ruins people's lives. I said, oh, I'm really sorry uh, that you feel that. I said, listen, have you got some time? And she's like, why? I said, well, look, if you've got some time, let's go and have a coffee. And so we go and have a coffee in the university cafeteria. And uh, I said, why? Why are you so angry? And it's kind of, all this stuff came out. And I, I said, look... I'm here, you, and I'm not going to justify it. I said, look, have there been mistakes made in the name of medicine? Yes, huge mistakes have been made in, in the name of medicine. Pharmacies have made mistakes. Doctors, surgeons, they've all made mistakes. Uh, but we don't throw out the whole of medicine mm, because yeah. of the mistakes that have been made. Mm. So I said to her, look, come on Tuesday and hear me speak. We'll have a coffee. She came, we went. Come and hear me Wednesday and we'll go for coffee. She came, we went. I said, come and hear me Thursday and we'll go for coffee. She came, we went. I said, there's one more meeting Friday. Come and hear me Friday and we'll go for coffee. Friday, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. That girl's name is Christine Christine Kane. Kane. Oh, Oh, my my goodness. goodness. Amazing. (laughs) I love it. You know, and and I think this, uh, Joni, back to your question. Look, we, uh, St. Augustine said, you cannot have God as your father without having the church as your mother. Mm. Okay? Wow. Now, Mm. if someone criticised my bride, I would be deeply hurt if they criticised her, deeply hurt, I'm not going to criticise the church. Mm. I'm going to be part of the church that's going to prepare her for his return. So good. Yes, so good. It is so good. Humour is so important. Oh. And, 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 you know, I think I think we've lost a little bit of it, but I just believe, you know, the scripture says a merry heart does good like a medicine. And the joy of the Lord the is, joy our of the Lord is our strength. Yes. And yes. I think if people realize if the enemy can get your joy, he gets your strength. Yes. And so we're worn out, worried, stressed out. Laughter is so important. I mean, if you laugh a certain amount of time, you lose weight. So absolutely, <laughs> and that's your book. No, when we totally. Beat that in well, listen, I'm singing from the same song sheet. I think, I think we need to laugh. Yes. We've got to have a really good sense yeah. of humour. Uh, you know, come on, let's not take ourselves too seriously. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know? exactly. And I actually do think that Jesus was really funny. Mm-hmm. But I think people don't understand it uh-huh. because most of the humour in the Gospels is, is Jewish humour. Uh-huh. Now, Jewish yeah. humour is humour by exaggeration. Mm-hmm. So, for example, um, he said to the disciples, you know, before you take the speck out of your brother's eye, mm-hmm. take out the telegraph pole from yeah. your eye. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, yeah. Jesus, that was a good one. You know, can you imagine <laughs> taking out this whole pole out of your eye? You know, so people sometimes don't always get the yeah. humour, yeah. but I, I think he was fun mm-hmm. uh, to be I with. That. I yeah. never yeah. thought of that as a humour. I love, I love to see yeah. pictures of Jesus portrayed where he's, like, with children and he's laughing. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I love to see that because I believe he did I laugh. He did. I know. Yeah. Joni, you're right. And, and we say to children, don't we? We say to children, grow up. But what did Jesus say to adults? Unless you become like little children. Yes. And little children just giggle. Yes. They yeah. just giggle right. about nothing. And yeah. it's like... And Jesus right. said, become like them. Yes. For such is the kingdom wow. of heaven. Yeah. You know, yeah. Fred and I have been married almost 57 years. Whoa. Wow. And what, one of the things that has kept us from killing each other is we get tickled. <laughs> yeah. we, would get, we would get tickled at the intensity or this... You know, one day Fred said... And, and I'm tickled is laugh. You, you laugh. Said, yeah. I'm, I'm yes. sorry. Fred said, I'm 
sorry that I was so short with you. And I said, yes, tomorrow would you be taller? <laughs> you know? I mean, you just laugh at these things. And it saves marriages and relationships yes. and oh, all no, kinds of things. True. Absolutely. And I wanted to ask you about optimism and, and pessimism. Yeah. Well, Positive and negative. Well, look, come on, you've got, you know, you've got the people, the glass is half empty. Then you've got the people, the glass is half full. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the people who are overflowing. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that's what I love Pastor Joel. Why yes. do I love Pastor Joel? Because he's overflowing. Why? Why? I love listening to Pastor Joel. Why? Because he makes me feel good. Exactly. I love, I love listening it. to Pastor Joel because, you know, I get all this negativity. Yes. And when you're with a person, where the glass is half empty and they're melancholic. Yes. I, I'm exhausted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's right. like the energy is sucked out yes. of you. Oh, yes. yes, amen. Isn't it? You drain. <laughs> totally. And you're trying to fill the cup up for them. And you're trying to fill the cup yeah. up for You've them. You've got the great one about the circumstances, if you're under the circumstances. Oh, yes. The thing, yeah, <laughs> if you think of circumstances, it's a bit like a mattress, yeah? If you lie on top of a mattress, it's nice and comfortable. But if you lie underneath, you suffocate. Yeah, and, and most people are lying underneath. Mm -hmm. They're underneath the mattress and they can't breathe. <laughs> Well, lie on top of it. <laughs> yes, 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 thank you. I love it. So good. Well, I'm going to bring up the one that's everyone's favorite, patience. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's that prayer? Give me patience, Lord, but hurry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Patience. Now, isn't that fascinating? Oh. I often think of Jesus. OK, why didn't Jesus start his ministry when he was 18? Right. Because he, he was perfect. So if he was 18, he could have done another 12 years and plus three, 15, he would have left us with a better church, right. a better shaped church. But no, my time has not yet come. Mm. So Jesus knew about patience. I had to wait. Now, it's interesting. When Jesus said, my time has not yet come, he said that several times. And he used the Greek word, and that Greek word is chronos, mm. chronological time. But then one day Jesus said, my time has come. He didn't use the word chronos. He used the word kairos. Kairos means God's time. Mm. Wow. You see, and where people who are kind of chronos, come on, come on, come on, you know, like this, <laughs> yeah. speed, speed, and it's not about speed. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's about working in Kronos to discover Kairos. Wow. That's good. And that's why I love the fruit of the Spirit. When the Spirit works in you, it produces love, joy, peace, patience. Yes. You know, and another thing I, I was thinking about, because you told us earlier about driving to the hospital for an hour, and you were very patient about that. <laughs> <laughs> That sometimes when I find myself in a situation, say you're going to get on a plane and it's delayed and you're sitting there or something happens and you have to make another plan or you have to go another direction or just something happens and you just, you're just like, oh, instead of getting upset about it, I always try to think, okay, Lord, what is it that you're wanting me to see yeah, yes, right now? Yes, and what yes, other plan do you have? Because a lot yeah. of times mm -hmm. something will happen or there will be an interaction mm -hmm. that will take place if I'm yeah. paying attention that right. would not have happened. So, Kelly, what would you say is kind of the secret for you and J. John? And you hear you travel all over. Mm -hmm. You're with him most of the time when he ministers. How do you keep your patience? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's been the Holy Spirit working in me, Joni. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing is, you know, you learn in marriage particularly, you learn to accommodate one another, don't you? You learn to kind of um, work with each other and to be patient with each other. Uh, and to I, serve one another. And serve one another. I mean, you've got to be unselfish if you're going to be married or you don't need to get married. That's true. That's true. That's true. That is true. But also I'm thinking of those dear mums who are probably tuned in now with their little children. And I think back to when my kids were little and they were running a riot. And, you know, all you can do is yell. And you think, why did I do that? Why did I yell? Mm -hmm. So my one little bit of advice is to any parents, any mums particularly, because I feel like mums are often perhaps less patient, um, you know, just that, take that moment. If your kid is acting up or doing something that is really not good, just take that moment to take a deep breath and just to think to yourself, OK, hang on. 
James Dobson, I believe, used to say, walk out of the room, you know, <laughs> walk yeah. out of the room. If you can, if it's safe to walk out of the room, walk out of the room. Just so you give yourself that moment. And I think yeah. for patients in the child-rearing years, yeah. it's just to kind of give yourself... Give yourself a break and also, you know, just yeah. take your time. Don't rush yes, things. That is good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love when you look at your wife with such adoration when she's speaking that so beautiful. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, this is a big one. Yes. Worry. Oh dear, worry. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, we, let's be honest. Oh, we we all grapple, have to grapple with this one, don't yeah. we? Yeah. And and it does affect us. Because we I, justify it, don't we? We do, yeah. and we're vulnerable to it, aren't mm. we? You know, we're vulnerable, you know, you have to go and see a doctor, you've got a doctor's appointment or, or this or that or your child or whatever, you know, and... Or yeah. something's going on with your children. No, Nothing's yeah. closer to your no. heart than that. Oh, no, yeah. and what, what we do, don't we, we magnify it. Yeah. We make it bigger than it ever was. And, you know, I always think about that scripture. We did a song with it called Cast All. Mm, yes. Cast all of your care yes, yeah. upon him because he cares for you. Yeah. And I mean, there are times when situations are out of our control yep. and we can worry about him. Right. Or we can just always, I mean, I make my kids do this sometimes. I'm just like, okay, here, let's give it to the Lord. Come on together, let's do yeah. this. Yeah. And we actually hand it over. Mm -hmm. And we do everything we can in the natural, but then at some point, we have to sometimes turn those things over to yes. the Lord, don't yeah. we? We do, and 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 that's a good analogy, Joni. You know, so you, you say, right, hand it to the Lord, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Well, then don't then pick it back <laughs> up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Isn't it? Take if your you burdens to the Lord and leave them there. <laughs> leave them yeah. there. Leave and it. And people used to go down to the altar to pray, and they would leave their burdens there. Yeah. yeah. And then they would pick it back up and <laughs> yes. go back right. to their walk seat. away. <laughs> well, worry worry affects our productivity. It you does. talk about that. It does. And don't don't you think we often worry the percentage of what we worry about never, never happens. happens. Mm -hmm. That's what he was saying. Yes, it I never know. happens. And, and it's exhausting emotionally, psychologically. It's, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. You know, come unto me, Jesus said, all those of you heavy laden. Mm -hmm. You can picture it, heavy laden. Yes. You know, and I will give you rest. So, so Jay John, when you look at worry, anxiety, all of those bitterness, all of those take energy. Mm -hmm. That do. none of us need to be mm -hmm. giving energy yeah. to all of that. No, it That's sucks so us, doesn't yeah. it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. it really does. It really does. Well, oh, we are out of time, but I hope today's program has been encouraging. I want you to know that I'm so grateful for each of you. You guys are so passionate about the subjects that we tackle here at the table, and you're always sending me topics that you're interested in and you're curious about. So thank you, all of you that watch for being an integral part of every Table Talk. Well, if you're watching today and you need prayer, again, that's why that toll-free number's on the screen. We have amazing prayer partners standing by. They're here 24-7. If you do happen to get a voicemail, leave your name and number. And I promise you, a real person will call you back. You can go to daystar.com and click on prayer. Submit your prayer request that way. But I want to thank Jay, John, and Kelly for joining us from across the pond. Thank you. <laughs> and for more on their ministry, you can visit them online at canonjjohn.com. Also, his new book, Will I Be Fat in Heaven? <laughs> and other curious questions. It really is questions like, why do we believe the Bible is true? Do babies go to heaven? Will we recognize family and friends in heaven? Does God really care about me? All of these great, great questions that people have, and I'm sure family members have. This would be just a, a wonderful book for you to get. Also, don't forget to join the conversation by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Jay, John, and Kelly. Thank we you. love you. Let us Thank know you, when Joni. you're ever on this side of, uh, of the pond. We, we want you to come be Thank with you. us. And, uh, of course, we see your uh, little encouraging a snippets yes. on the breaks yes. of Daystar. Yeah. Uh, do people see you on Daystar they giving do. that? Oh, we get messages from people from Daystar <laughs> oh, all good. around. Oh, good. So good. Thank you. Well, thank you for taking the time to do that. And thank you for watching today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.